uh, everywhere Chauncey supplied, they always wanted to call him his pastor. <laughs> but uh, he stayed with us for several years, and we had the best time. And which one of you, Gil, which one of you fell over the banister in the gym? He's not here. He's not here. He's not here. <laughs> Wonderful that you are doing this stuff. Okay. We, uh, we, we want to move now to a time for some comments from family members. Uh, and I've, in making the introductions earlier, I failed to mention uh, that there is one of the daily uh, sons missing tonight. Uh, Dale, uh, who lives in uh, New York, uh, has just today, I believe, returned from a safari in Africa and was not able to make the connections to, to get here for this. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I failed to explain that and uh, am remiss in doing so. Uh, several family members would like uh, to, to make some comments now, and I'm going to ask uh, them just to take turns as you stand, and then uh, uh, Dr. Gil Daly will bring a, a closing thought from the family before we move on to the next segment uh, of the program. Uh, why don't we start? Right over here. I'm Rita Dowers from Leslie, Georgia, and I want to tell you why Chauncey Jr. He's my first cousin, and we still call him Chauncey Jr. <laughs> but I want to tell you how he's been able to accomplish all these wonderful things. Is because he has such a wonderful family heritage and grew up in rural Newington, Georgia, where I did, and has been such an inspiration to all of us, even though he left us so quickly. Well, we're so glad to be here tonight to honor him. And Christine was a school teacher in Hiltonia, Georgia, a little town not far from us where we grew up in Scriven County, when uh, they met, and she's meant so much to this family. And we're so glad to be here. Others from the family, just uh, feel free to stand where you are. Anyone who'd like to say anything, uh, no pressure, but uh, or from the other tables of family members uh, who are here. You. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I think. Christine, Bob wants to say a few words. I think she's the most appropriate person to make this uh, this little talk. She certainly has been Dad's helpmate through the years. She's been such an inspiration. She's such a friend to all of you, uh, and she's certainly been the, the matriarch and the guiding hand along with Dad in our family. So let's let her say a few words before we close out the family. Well, that's it, Mark. Do you want me to cry? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't hear me, but we've lived 57 good years together. That's a long time. And I told somebody the other day that I hope we live 57 more. And they said, oh, I, I wouldn't say that. I'd be ashamed to say that. I said, I'm not. I said, uh, maybe we'll live part of them. <laughs> We've had a time, we really have, but we appreciate all of your love and all of your kindnesses. The Western Recorder, the Secretary of State, the people of the Baptist Building, you all have, and the people of the Hurst Barn Baptist Church, and all of you, even some of you in this church, uh, we know real well. But. All I can say is thank you, and I love you, and we covet your prayers for us. And I, I still hope and still think that there's a chance 
that he's going to get better. I said to the doctor the other day, the last time we went to it, I said, Dr. Wright, do you believe in miracles? He said, yes, I do. I said, well, I'm glad because I do too. So, but I go over to see him and that's how I, that's the highlight of my day is going to the nursing home and we visit and talks like he always says. I can't get him to eat and he's not in a good humor sometimes. But I say to him, now look here, I came to see you, not for you to see me. That makes a difference, you know, when you say that. And uh, we're doing as well as we can, and we do appreciate your prayers and every act of kindness, the cards and everything. And uh, we, we hope, hope some way we can pay you all back. Some way, someday. Our preacher said not many Sundays ago that if you are having troubles, he said, don't mind because they wouldn't last always. And other people were going to have troubles too. So uh, I guess that's it. So maybe I'll have a chance to pay you all back. Thank you, Mom. I, I think after that, I think, as Mark said earlier, I think we just should say, have the benediction and go home. Uh, she's been his helpmate for 57 years now, and they, they're inseparable. And as you know, uh, it's always been the ministry of Christine and Chauncey Daly, and not one or the other. Uh, I, I thank you very much for the opportunity to come tonight. Let me, from the whole family, uh, thank each one of you, friends, colleagues, uh, friends over the years, Ms. Redding, dear, I remember from our days in Georgetown, Harold Shoulders, I remember all these dear friends, Wayne Ward, um, all these, uh, these, these, every, everybody who's touched uh, not only the lives of dad and mom, but my brothers. Um, we're here tonight pretty much in force. Uh, Mike is on the end, has been introduced. Uh, Phil and his lovely wife, Lydia, are here. Uh, my, wa uh, my wife Carolyn is here, our, our son, uh, dad's grandson, youngest uh, grandson is here. Uh, we have two children, both of them are in Texas, uh, and they send their love in regards tonight. Uh, dad also now has, uh, has, besides grandchildren, he has three great-grandchildren, three great-granddaughters, great uh, all in Dallas, and they couldn't be here tonight, but they, they, all, uh, are, uh, they all send their love. We particularly want to thank with uh, the bottom of our hearts, our dear, dear relatives from, from Georgia and Alabama uh, who came from, from dad's, dad's uh, homeland, from uh, where his roots uh, have come this distance. There's been since some delightful days here and evening and hours with us in recalling um, uh, our, our, our love, our family love over the years. But uh, tonight, we really want to thank, of course, we thank God and we thank the editor, the uh, the. Uh, Board, Board of Directors of Western Recorder and, and Mark Greenfield for coming up with this, uh, this uh, the, the uh, conceiving, the idea of publishing Dad's uh, editorials. Uh, the, uh, as, as, as A.B. said earlier this evening, uh, the best editorials, it'd be hard, and I'm glad he had to pick and Mark had to pick because I, I would certainly have trouble picking uh, those editorials. But we, we don't look upon this as a memorial as much as we look upon it as another means of uh, an instrument to, to carry on God's work. Dad's work has always, his profession has always been advancing Christ's call and Christ's uh, message, uh, God's message, and Christ, uh, uh, the, 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 our, 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 uh, uh, the uh, Christian message throughout, uh, for Kentucky Baptists and throughout the Southern Baptist Convention in the world. Um, and I th this, we look upon this tonight as a family, uh, as, as a great 
means of just really continuing his work, just using this uh, this vehicle to continue his work and providing the Western Quarter for the the, uh, the study and the home of every uh, Kentucky Baptist minister. Our family has always been stamped by Dad's ideals, his uh, his Christian commitment. His independence, his drive, the discipline, the commitment that's been touched on tonight. Uh, Dad is his own own person. He's uh, always been submissive, totally to God's will for his life and and, and the example of our, our our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he certainly has been. Um, he's he's an independent individual, and uh, he's always stressed this. I think as 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 we touched on this tonight, I think we have to go back to his heritage to see where he got this. You you probably remember over the years he's he's mentioned this in the recorder. He had two loving. He was the only child of two loving uh, parents who both of whom uh, and uh, humble humble background agricultural background South Georgia. Uh, they may have not been rich in earthly uh, riches uh, earthly riches, but they were great great rich in, in Christian love and love and 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 uh, great devotion to him. Uh, he was their pride and joy. Uh, he went from a, from a, a, a days and in, 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 in the depression days in Georgia, uh, grew up and, and went on to through the uh, through the Baptist College system in Georgia, uh, including Mercer, and came on. And as you know, became a school teacher. Uh, he was actually the school teacher at Hiltonia, as we'd have mentioned, uh, when Mom came as a as a school as a uh, as to teach music. And uh, the chemistry uh, was electric, and uh, it wasn't long before we had uh, we had. Uh, uh, the two uh, staff members there uh, joining together, and um, I've heard some delightful stories about that. Dad, is, dad, dad, uh, mom tells me, dad, dad doesn't talk much about himself, but he, I, I understand, he always had basically the call of, of uh, the ministry in his mind. Even though he was an educator, he always did this. As a matter of fact, he was preaching, preaching in part-time uh, uh, services there in. Uh, uh, part, part time, full, uh, part time pulpits in Georgia during the times he was uh, principal there at the uh, Hiltonia High School, at Hiltonia School. Um, he, uh, of course, came to the seminary in um, uh, 1942, uh, actually 19, 1943. Uh, I do want to get him mention before I leave the fact that his, his parents, uh, Chauncey, and, as we just say, Chauncey and, and, and uh, Kathleen Daly, uh, had a marked, marked influence on his life. Uh, both of them, uh, and also he was influenced by his father-in-law, mom's uh, father, uh, uh, outstanding Christian layman, uh, uh, Mr. Tom Rachels, and uh, Mr. Tom always supported dads um, and, and mom and, and all they did, uh, outstanding, outstanding Christian layman. So he's got quite a heritage to look back on. Um, as far as uh, his great helpmate, the greatest influence, I think, in his life on this earth, and dad, Dad mentions this in the editorial, on his last editorial. And I, the, the, tonight, I'm just reflecting back on his last editorial. You might remember he, he paraphrased the psalmist, the psalmist uh, um, praise and the psalmist witness when he said, my lines have fallen along pleasant places. I think that's the, that's the greatest, uh, that's, that's basically what we would like as a family to say tonight because of the influence of Dad and Mom. Uh, our lines really, truly have fallen along pleasant places. Dad wrote that editorial in June of 1984, the last editorial he wrote. And he mentioned in that editorial the, uh, his helpmate of 57 years now, uh, and, and Christine, and, and just family members, I think we ought to start off by just thanking her and thanking, let her, let you give you a, a little more of her greetings. Um, he, in that editorial, he mentioned that my greatest human debt, and I quote him now, is to Christine. He mentioned that she suffered from our frustrations for which she was not responsible, and she's been the object of hostilities which I concealed from those arousing them. She's also been my most faithful supporter and most valuable critic. And I think that's a lot to say for a, a, a helpmate of over the years. Um, Dad has, uh, they've, they've been inseparable, uh, they've uh, shared a life together, and she tells the story of of Walter Moore. Walter Moore was an outstanding pastor in Georgia who was dad's pastor when dad was in, um, in high school, in, in, in grade school. Uh, unfortunately, the, the high school there in Newington is we didn't, and then kind of test burned. Dad couldn't go to high school in Scriven County, so he had to, uh, to, to go to high school. He was, he actually went and lived with Walter Moore and his family uh, in an close, an adjacent uh, town, close by town. Uh, Walter Moore was a profound influence on them, uh, all, always during his life. I remember Walter Moore very well. He married them, but uh, Dad went to him as his mentor in the, in the, in the ministry, 
and ask him, uh, Walter, uh, Dr. Moore, should, should uh, Reverend Moore, should, I, should you think I should pursue this? You know, I've been called. Do you think I should, leave in the middle of the war, go to the seminary? And I think Walter, uh, I've heard that Walter told him, said, what does Christine think? Christine is is going to is is the ultimate. Uh, it should beside the Lord's call. If you, will, if she's going to accept this life, does she will she be a minister's wife? And uh, and Dad answered affirmatively, and she certainly has fulfilled that role. So I think that was the uh, something I've heard, and and I, as all many of you as pastors' wives can can attest to that. That uh, it's, you truly are a team, and they've been a team over the years. As far as uh, her sons, uh, we we have always. Uh, had an outstanding role model in dad. Um, uh, his faith in God, his love of God, his, his, his teaching of us to be, com uh, be content with what we have uh, on earth. But at the same time, sharing uh, that uh, to develop the very best we have, to, to achieve, uh, and he certainly set the role model, to achieve uh, the, and do the best, very, the best we can with the talents God's given us. Um, dad often expressed to us especially in later years, that he, he doesn't express his emotions as much as he liked to, uh, especially sometimes his love. But we've always felt that. We've always seen that in his, his life, uh, in his everyday uh, living, examples he's given for us. And I think if you recall one of his more touching editorials as, as, a, as one of his sons, uh, his editorial about uh, his youngest son uh, going away to college, uh, how touching that was about missing uh, missing him there and the dog missing him and, and so on and so forth. Only a man with great sense and great love could, could reflect that. Um, so we, we've all benefited by that. And let's simply, simply say that we've, we certainly have had a role model of the years that we're proud of. And we can all, as, as uh, husbands and fathers, can, can attest to that. Uh, Dad's ministry, uh, that's been touched on tonight. That's been his life. Uh, he's as great, a, uh, I think, a husband and father as he's been. Uh, Dad, has, has, his ministry has really uh, been uh, to the forefront um, in his life. Uh, his whole ministry, and I think, again, wherever he's been, it, it is been, as, as Gene so aptly and so well said tonight, he's, uh, he's certainly spread the gospel, but he's always emphasized that all of us have been created in God's image. God created us all in his image. He created us with a mind as well as emotions. And he created us to seek the truth. Dad has always uh, 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 tried to disseminate the truth, whether it be a fellow at the seminary when he was pastoring at uh, Providence uh, in Woodburn, Southern Kentucky, uh, whether when he uh, went to um, went to Georgetown, some memorable years, some of the happiest years of his life were at Georgetown College. He was a natural teacher, loved teaching, loved the camaraderie of the, the uh, students there and, uh, and the professors. Uh, and then, of course, when he felt the call to uh, Harrodsburg, uh, we as a family can always remember those three short years, but uh, uh, how generous and how loving the people in Harrodsburg were. Very receptive, very formative years for me, teenage years for me. And in, in many regards, we really, uh, as much as we are glad Dad came to serve the Western Quarter, uh, many times we felt like our heart, many times was left, was left in Harrodsburg. That's the kind of community that is. Uh, whether it would be there, and Dad, I remember Dad taking some, uh, he never immense words there. Uh, some of the Harrodsburg members can remember. I remember one of his sermons there he came to, to town and at that time the Mercer County Fair uh, had uh, a famous fair in Central Kentucky horse show had um, they just happened to that the year have a, a little risque uh, sort of out of out of uh, of uh, context there a little risque uh, uh, show this was the 50s now where some of the girls were showing a little too much flesh well, well, Dad, uh, Dad, 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 Dad got wind of that, and uh, he asked them to uh, to let him be the uh, as a moral leader, basically of the town, as the, the Baptist Church dominates the town in, in Mercer County. I uh, understand they took him on a tour of that. I understand he, when he saw that, he got up the next Sunday morning and oh, he preached right. He didn't didn't mince any words. Uh, he had the directors of the fair. He had directors of the the prominent civic leaders sitting right there in the front row. But he didn't he didn't he didn't spare any in his words. I think his one of his statements was, "Well, if I were a show horse, I wouldn't even show up to go around that ring in that in that, in that, fair, in that fair and horse show." So, needless to say, that was the that was the influence they did to to uh, to to uh, perfect the situation there that was always a very delightful and wonderful town to live in. But uh, be it there as, as a pastor, and then, of course, having the call, as, as we said, it's interesting, interesting to hear Wayne tonight talk, Dr. Ward, whom I remember very much coming to Harrisburg many times in preaching, uh, to, uh, 
to, to, to tell, tell about his, 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 his being an instrument in bringing that to the Western Quarter. Uh, th those are very, very happy years, and as we've all uh, recounted, Dad uh, certainly didn't back off on any of the, uh, the front, uh, the, uh, the issues of the day, particularly the race relations uh, and other issues which weren't popular. And uh, it was so great to hear uh, tonight uh, a former secretary talk about some of the heat she had to take, and I'm, I'm sorry she had to take it, but uh, Dad certainly, certainly didn't mince any words, and I'm sure it was there. Uh, but be all these places, and of course, um, we, we feel that um, his, his main thrust in life has been, has been to uh, disseminate the truth and to, to give people, uh, create, to give all of us, creating God's image by God, uh, the truth and let us, let us, let us give us the facts and let us speak the truth and give us the facts and let us make our uh, mind up and, and uh, respond to God's call and God's will uh, as opposed to being, uh, having forced upon us by others who, who, who one time would like to corner all the, feel like they have a corner perhaps on all the truth. Uh, in getting ready for these few words tonight, I was asking my brothers and, and mom, asking uh, what might want to be said, and Phil uh, came up with an idea. He said, you know, Gil, he said, be sure to emphasize Dad's uh, commitment, total commitment to Kentucky Baptist, Southern Baptist Convention, uh, that you know his, his life has been to give Baptists all the facts. He's basically, I think, if you had to professionally Capsule, encapsulate his uh, capsule, his uh, capsule, his uh, professional life. It's been the fact that he's always felt that if you give Baptists all the facts, they'll make the right decision. So I think he's un 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 unfailingly compromise, uh, failed to ever compromise that point. Uh, he's been involved in the work. That's been his basically uh, his work. His life has been informing Baptists in the, in the, in the uh, Georgetown College in the pulpit, wherever he's been, or at, as a Western Recorder. And again, I want to thank you again from the family tonight. Uh, we thank you very much for involved, uh, being involved in, in, in sharing this, and we certainly feel like this is a continuation of Dad's ministry, and we appreciate your help so much in being sure that the Daily Foundation is a success and its uh, stated goal of putting that the Western Court in every, the home of every pastor in Kentucky. Thank, Thank you very much, much, and God bless you. We're proud tonight to present uh, a new book that uh, we've put together in honor of Dr. and Mrs. Daly for this, for this evening. Uh, and it's appropriately titled, Daily Observations. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, A.B. Colvin had the daunting task of going through and reading every editorial Dr. Daly wrote over 27 years. Now keep in mind that sometimes he wrote two and three editorials a week. Uh, so that was a lot of reading, a lot of sifting to do. Uh, and, and I can think of no one who is better suited to have done that uh, than, than A.B. And he did a masterful job of it. Sifted those out. I sifted a little more from there. We edited them down. Uh, worked with Providence House Publishers in Nashville uh, to come up uh, with this volume. And uh, we are very, very proud of it. And I, almost every editorial that has been mentioned here tonight is in this book. Uh, these are incredible writings. Uh, as I worked through it, editing it, I was amazed. Uh, sometimes if I didn't look at the date on the editorial, I could have sworn it had been written yesterday. It is so relevant to the place where we live even, even yet. And when you look at the, um, the editorials on race, and to understand that they were written in the 50s and 60s, uh, you wonder how, how, he's, how he lived. Uh, because, because he really spoke, spoke a truth that, that we take for granted today, today but that was not well understood among people like us in that day. And it is an incredible uh, and humbling thing for me to read through this and realize the heritage that Kentucky Baptists have in such a, a great man as uh, has occupied the chair of the editor of the Western Recorder. Uh, it is our pleasure to make this book available uh, to Kentucky Baptist, and we, we are launching it, unveiling it tonight for the first time. You're among the first people to see it. Uh, we will begin advertising it in the Western Recorder this week. Uh, I want to briefly uh, present some special copies of the book to the family members uh, who are here tonight. We have a few uh, limited edition uh, hardbound copies 
uh, of the book that I'd like to present, first of all, to Mrs. Daly. The, the, the purpose of the um, CR and Christine Daly Endowment Fund is to ensure that the kind of Western recorder that we know has existed thus far may continue to exist. As you know, these are perilous days for Baptists. These are perilous days for uh, Baptist journalism. The Western recorder has a wonderful tradition of it just as Gil, Gil said, uh, I believe the words were coined first by, uh, was it E.S. James? To trust the Lord and tell the people? There's some dispute over where that originated, uh, actually. But that's a motto many of us live by. And it's a motto that uh, has guided the recorder through the years and does to this day. It's a motto that, gu that guides our board of directors in the decisions they make. We want to ensure that every Kentucky Baptist pastor always receives the Western Recorder. Uh, we believe it is a vital tool for pastors to be informed about what's going on, not only in, in Baptist issues, but in understanding religious issues of the day. Because that is an increasingly important thing in the culture in which we live. So we've, we have founded, with the help of the Kentucky Baptist Foundation, and I want to publicly thank Barry Allen and his staff from the Foundation for helping us put this together and think through it and how to do it the right way and providing a place that is trustworthy to, in, to entrust funds to. This fund will be owned by the Board of Directors of the Western Recorder and it will be managed by the Kentucky Baptist Foundation. Uh, notwithstanding stock market days like today, uh, we, we know the Foundation will handle things well and with great trust. And, and this, this will ensure the future of the recorder for years to come. Just, just briefly, let me point out that at your place there is a, a card and an envelope that we would like for you to consider how you can be a part of honoring the dailies through this. You'll see there are different levels in here. Uh, we're going to, we have a wonderful photo of Dr. Daly. It's this very photo, as a matter of fact, that hangs in the entryway to our office. And on either side of that, soon we'll flank uh, that will be uh, some plaques that will have the names of people who have honored the dailies through this. Uh, Harrodsburg Baptist Church has really helped set the pace in this, and I thank Bob DeFore for his leadership in the church being a very key player in founding this endowment fund. Uh, and to some of you who also already stepped forward with this, thank you for your commitment to the dailies. Thank you for your commitment to the Western Recorder. As we prepare to leave in a few moments, at the back table, we have copies of Daily Observations. We'd like for each family here to have a copy of this book as you leave tonight. Uh, if you'd like to purchase additional copies for friends or for your church, you may do that. The cost is $15 a piece. Um, you'll read uh, everything else you need to know is printed on the card uh, about the books. This is, this is the kind of book that needs to be in every church library in Kentucky. This is the kind of book that needs to be in every public library in Kentucky. This is the kind of book that not just folks like us who've been around the block a few times need to read, but younger people need to read to have an understanding of what it was like to have a dignitary from a foreign country driving across Kentucky and not being able to find a place to feed him because of his skin color. It's something that my children and many of your children and grandchildren cannot comprehend. Uh, but yet it's where we've come from and it's so eloquently explained it moves you to tears. Uh, this is a wonderful heritage, a treasure trove of Kentucky Baptist history. And I hope you'll enjoy it and share it with others as well. Thank you so much for your participation in this, for being here tonight. Let me just say thanks very briefly to several other people. Uh, I did not introduce earlier, but do want to point out now that also we are privileged with us tonight uh, as, as we, we have the passing, passing of generations, generations also, uh, to have two uh, former, one former, one present executive, executive secretary of the Kentucky Baptist Convention, Convention with us. Bill Marshall, of course, uh, is here. Bill currently serves on the board of the Western Recorder. 
and then Bill Mackey, also seated uh, back to my left, your right, uh, is the new executive secretary of the Kentucky Baptist Convention. Uh, came through reading the Western Recorder during Dr. Daly's years uh, when he was a pastor in the state as well. Pat Sullivan is with us tonight, is a good friend of the Recorder. She is responsible for these beautiful flowers you see on the tables tonight. And aren't they gorgeous? We thought it was especially fitting to have roses because Dr. Daly grew roses for so uh, many years and tended a, a, a rose garden. Uh, Mari Smith and Shirley Wooten from our staff. Mari is our marketing and business manager. Most of you know Mari. Shirley uh, Wooten is our new administrative secretary who's uh, officially beginning that role tomorrow but has been with us through the summer. Uh, have done enormous work to make this banquet possible. And Mari has the unique perspective of having grown up as a friend of the Daly family uh, as well, and now to be an employee of the Recorder and to work with this, it's just sort of deja vu all over again, uh, as they say. The reason Shirley is with us, uh, coming on staff, and many of you may not be aware that today was Ann Tatum's last day as secretary in the Western Recorder. After 41 years, Ann uh, is finally getting free of us. <laughs> And, and you want to say a word of congratulations to Anne upon her retirement as well. Uh, Dorothy Hartzell played the piano for us for the dinner music, and what a lovely job. Lovely job that was. Dorothy, thank you. Thank you. Larry Brannon is the man uh, in blue here, uh, who is from the Kentucky Baptist Convention Communications Office, who is videotaping this thing so that we will be able to remember it and share it with other members of the family as well. Thank, Thank you again for being, being here. I'd, I'd like to, to ask June Rice to come and say our benediction. Uh, be sure to sign the guest book on the way out if you haven't signed it. Look at the photos uh, on, on the display board and please be sure to pick up a copy of Daily Observations. June. May we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this evening, this inspiring tribute to the ministry of Chauncey Daly and his, his life and his, how he has inspired so many people. We just give you now the endowment to do with as you wish. We pray your blessings on Dr. Daly and Mrs. Daly and the family. We thank you for his courage and we thank you for his ability to speak the truth. We pray for Kentucky Baptist. We pray for the, the Western Recorder Board and the Western Recorder staff that, that we will continue to speak the truth in love and trust the Lord and tell the people. Go with us, guide us, and bless us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Are there any of those hardbound copies that we can buy? We're using them as incentives for donors uh, of $500 or more is, is, the, is the way that... Uh, I'll take